Josh. Eh. 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 How's it going tonight, fellas? Pretty good, I'm man. I'm tired. I'm tired. just tired. <laughs> I have no reason to be tired. I went to bed, not on time, but earlier than I thought I would. I slept in late. And I just woke up just dragging. Yeah, I see. Like a dragon? A day. Hold yeah. on. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> Tom's a dragon. Can you got scales? Am. Where's your scales? I can't show you that. It's only on one place. In a pro. Oh, yeah, let, let's not go there. <laughs> um, as some of you see, uh, we are Adam down. Um, Adam made a bad food choice, and he might be paying for it right now. So Adam's not feeling the greatest, so you'll catch him next week. Dang it, Adam. Yeah. The clam sauce. Always a bad idea, man. Yeah, always you can't go with idea. the clam sauce. Yeah. Can't, it can never trust it. Uh, so speaking of food, I have uh, a wonderful smoky black tea. Uh, it's called Russian Caravan Smoky. Uh, it is a mixture of smoked Chinese and Indian teas to give you a good, smooth black tea, but with a nice smoky kick. It is wonderful. <laughs> It just smells delicious. Fills the house. Smells like a campfire. Not as smoky as the Lapsang Suchong, but still very enjoyable. Uh, I did try this iced last night. Not the same. It's got to be hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what you get. I, that's exactly how I felt about that. <laughs> that's what you get. Okay, I do have a note, though. For last cast, we, we, we ruined it. I'm sorry, guys. I know the fans are really let down. We did not talk about food once that cast. There was we didn't. no food to really talk there was about. No, there was no food discussion, so all of those hundreds of thousands of viewers and, and, and people listen to the cast, like, we, we apologize. We didn't, we didn't mean to, you know, I know all of you that listen specifically for the food content, um, it, was, it was severely lacking last, and, you know, we apologize. Yeah, we, we fucked up. We really did. Uh, so to fix that, last night I had Frito Pie. Now, I'm pretty sure Irk knows what Frito Pie is, but Josh, have you ever had Frito Pie? I have. Oh my god. I fucking <laughs> love Frito Pie. It was great. <laughs> I went to a party and there was just Frito Pie everywhere and you can just grab some and walk around with it. It was delicious. Oh, that sounds I'm, pretty bomb. I'm not familiar with Frito Pie. Whoa, hold on here. Hold on. Out of all the people, I would have thought that you were like the Frito Pie specialist. All right. You take a small bag of Fritos, like the personal bags, mm -hmm. cut off the top, put in a, a heaping scoop of chili, top it with uh, with like shredded cheddar, and then make sure that the shredded cheddar gets all melty so everything kind of congeals into one mass, and you got yourself some Frito Pie. So have it's you like guys a ever, walking I'm, taco. Yeah. Kind of like a walking taco, but a little bit different. Have you guys Chilly. ever had a um, had a, a ghetto tamale or a prison tamale? I have not. I've had never tamales, but never a prison tamale. So what you do is you take a Dorito bag and you crunch up the little, little, little personal ones, and you crunch up that that uh, that Dorito bag and you really really fine, right? And then you take the top ramen and you do the same thing. You crunch up the top ramen and you pour the top ramen into the Dorito bag, and then you fill that with hot water, not to the brim, but just to, you know to to get the contents leveled up and then you roll it you know you roll it real tight and you wrap it in a towel and then you wait and then when you're done you just kind of dump your little tamale out so that's a hmm. tamale oh i might have to try that it's I, probably I horrible that. i love all like the little shitty things like frito pie walking tacos prison tamales now like <laughs> the horrible shitty food that you make out of shittier food that's just <laughs> the best Dude, but I can't get better food than that. Some of them are just super niche, like a walking taco. If you're at a county fair and you, you know, you don't want to sit down and eat, you just get a walking taco, a fucking spork, because that's what you yeah. eat a walking taco with. It's gotta be and a you spork. just walk no around spoon, the fair. No fork, spork, or it's not a walking taco. A I'm spork. putting that rule down right now. Yeah. Oh my god! And it's just what you eat a walking taco with. It's a spork. Yeah. It's it's normally at a it's at a county fair or a festival. They're not wanting to spend a lot of money, so they get sporks. That's the best, yeah. Just in case, you know? And that normally you know, comes well, packaged with your uh, napkin, too. We have... I, think, um, I, I have a friend that would be really, really disappointed in this because uh, she does... Um, she, she cooks. She actually had, We had a really good meal she cooked for us the other day, but um, she also made us for uh, breakfast day. She, she gave us cinnamon rolls, homemade cinnamon rolls, and they were like... 
they looked amazing. They're like, oh my god, these are gonna be so good. So this morning we got up and we and we put them in the oven, and we didn't put in there long enough. So like, oh. were, so we kind of like ruined them, and then we started tearing them apart, and like they're like the middle was all bad it wasn't bad it was like you know it was still like raw pastry dough and then we yeah we we still ate it and then we realized the raw pastry dough is really really bad for you so you gotta get, <laughs> get kind of queasy it's not good anyway make sure you cook your pastry dough don't be like me i gotta don't i gotta like say you. <laughs> i uh so this is way way back in the day and by way back in the day i mean like a year ago i went to i think it was ihop and I got pancakes with Cinnabon icing, Cinnabon cinnamon chips, and like a cinnamon swirl syrup. Oh man. It was it was like pancakes, but a Cinnabon cinnamon roll all in one. It was the most American thing <laughs> I've ever eaten in my entire life. I got six forms of diabetes right there. Sounds um, great. They, yeah. they give you like a full like giant needle of insulin at the table when you're eating <laughs> this thing. But oh my god, it was so good. I need to have this again. Speaking of insulin overdose, did you guys ever um, see that uh, episode of uh, Boondocks, the Itis? No. Uh, I did well, not. The, oh, it's great. Like, so that's the whole gimmick is he has like this. You know, he makes his soul food restaurant with a whole bunch of like really terrible for you stuff. And one of the things that he makes is called a Luther Burger. And it's like a pound of beef with like bacon. There's like a whole bunch. There's like a whole bunch of shit on it, right? It's just like this disgusting mess. And it's put in between two Krispy Kreme donuts. Oh and my like, god. And two things about that. One, I really want Binging with Babbage to make this because that would yeah. be fucking amazing. <laughs> and two, I there's apparently there's a place near us that uh, does like donut sandwiches and like those are like they make donuts as the buns and like they have hamburgers and stuff with donut buns i don't know how i feel about that no it kind of makes me a little like a little wary but everyone's like yeah we should go do that i'm like i don't know if i want to do that like, <laughs> like like i've never been like it's like hey everybody let's go like let's go do hard drugs like i don't know if i really want to <laughs> do hard drugs i guess the first time about food like i felt that way about food but like, oh. okay yeah, i gotta no. say i gotta say i i was just like you uh -huh. back in, back in the day until okay. i had i had a burger a big old greasy cheesy burger using Krispy Kreme donuts as the buns. And oh my God, it was so good. There is what no is reason it should have been as good as it was. It's but a, it was delicious. That doesn't sound good to me. I mean, to me, a, I like the idea no, of like a bagel awful. or some specialty bread. Yeah, but exactly, not like a, a French bread or something. Yeah, just not okay, sugary it, it was, ass glazed donuts. Dude, it was so fucking weird because it was like caramelized on the insides and it was crispy, but it was sweet and savory all the same time. It was... Like the weirdest blend of flavors that sounds fucking horrible together, so, but it was delicious. So you said it was also crispy. So this means it wasn't just like straight up crispy creams. They like baked them no, no, extra. Like they threw it on the grill, man. Like they did okay. those like hamburger buns. Yeah. They okay, caramel, that... they like fucking baked the bottom of the buns. I mean, I get it too. Like it's like sweet and savory. Like those go together. That's just how it works, you know? So <laughs> it, it kind of makes sense. But to me, it's not about like whether or not it'll taste good because it like, Okay, let's just stack a bunch of horrible things together into one like mashup of like nastiness, and it's always gonna be tasty. Like oh, it's gonna taste to good. Yeah, that's just it. Like, we'll just deep fry that bitch. I'm ready. You know, like, like that's, that's uh, well, the one thesis of, my... of the country is basically let's take a bunch of like weird shit, mash it together in like this melting pot of a country, like food, people, uh, Taco Bell doesn't matter. Just smoosh it all together, and it'll be great one day you just you just gotta let it simmer a little bit when i the issue, flavors the get issue to know is, each other the when issue I, is, is i'm worried about my health like i like i'm genuinely like I'm, I'm i'm worried about like coming out of the the store or a restaurant or whatever you're gonna call it like wheezing like i'm a big i'm picturing myself coming out like after like <laughs> you know like like a, a three pound burger with Krispy Kreme donuts as buns and coming out like like just wheezing and like i can hear like a like it almost sounds like you know like i just can't I can't function as a human coming out of that building. Like, or maybe I don't come See, out of that building. To me, I don't do it <laughs> often. You never leave. You go in, you never come out. But I like they have to getting, wheel you out. I like getting that kind of food, though. I don't do it often, but like the Terminator in Columbus and stuff like that. My first weekend in Columbus when I moved there, there was this burger. It was grilled cheeses for the buns, a half pound patty, half pound of poured pork, a thing of bacon, and a fried egg. It was ungodly amazing. 
Good but like, God, man. That wow. kind of sandwich is one of those things where like once a month, I want something like that. Or like Melt. Um, there's a specialty chain. It's around the country, but there's only like 15 of them where they make right. a grilled cheese and they stick an entire meal inside this grilled cheese. My, <laughs> my grilled cheese was almost as tall as my pint glass. Oh it my was God. Absurd. Oh man, I, I love I love like overindulgence for sure. I, I I can't I can't. There's 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 this place that used to uh, it used to be in Berkeley. I can't find it, but they used to like make this BLT with like I swear like forty strips of bacon like layered on top of each other like cross hatch. Like it was just like this the like bacon just, blanket. Yeah, it was, but it was like like six layers of bacon, and it was like a big like it was like that big, <laughs> you know. So it was like this big like area and volume of bacon and like that's what they called their blt it's just like mostly bacon it's like <laughs> that's the best way that's the only way to make a blt okay oh my god so can i say some blasphemy stuff right now sure yeah i think the bacon hype is incredibly over overblown like i think it, that people put bacon on 90 percent of the things that they put it on it shouldn't be on like bacon I mean, wrap, bacon wrap steak, I think is one of the worst things I've ever had. You are ruining a steak by wrapping a no, shitty, no, no, by wrapping no. a shitty cut of pork around a prime cut of beef. No, 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 no. Okay, so like that, I'll totally disagree with you on because the thing is, is like especially like a super lean cut. There's a purpose for that, and that's to keep the moisture in the burger, especially if you're grilling it. Yeah. Like that's the reason you do it. Like if you have an extra lean cut of like filet mignon or something like that, and you wrap that bitch in in bacon, it's not about the bacon. You don't even eat the bacon sometimes. You know, sometimes they'll grill the bacon up a little bit more. If you have like, to wrap it to seal in the juices, you're cooking it wrong. No, you're putting juices in. Like you're trying to make it more moist. Like that's yeah. the idea. That's the idea behind it. Granted, I'm not like a. I'm not going to pretend I'm like some steak expert, but I understand like why it's being done and the goal of it. Right? Like there's a there's like there's like a point. It's a lean cut. It doesn't have a lot of fat on it. It could get dry really easily. So like maybe maybe it's more of a crutch, right? Like maybe yeah. maybe it makes it a lot easier to cook it with it's, like, it's there's a backup. Maybe. I don't know. But see, I don't know shit about steaks. So I'm just so letting you know. We've got we've got a big raging debate happening in chat right now. I've got to ask you guys, how do you feel about eggs on a burger? Fried egg, burger on top. Makes it the best burger you get. It takes Dude, a okay. good burger and makes it better. All right, Josh. I, I don't know. I don't, I've had it. I don't think I've ever had it. So I can't what? say that what? it's good. Yeah, no, you I can't say it's good or bad. There's oh my one. God. Okay. It's there's fantastic. A, there's a place over by my, uh, over by my work that has it. I will have one. I will come back and I will let you know whether or not I liked it. Honestly, you, a you solid one. Go to Red Robin. Go to Red Robin. Get the Royal Burger. That's actually yeah, pretty Red Robin's good. Royal. Yeah, no, this is like a super nice burger place. It's like okay. Oh, okay. well, not like not like Ruth's Chris of Burgers, but it's just like a good burger place, <laughs> and they and they have one with an egg on it. So I'll just you, do that. You gotta <laughs> gotta get bacon on it though, because it's gotta be bacon and eggs on a burger. The breakfast so burger. Breakfast burger. Okay. Yeah. 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 I see. Make sure make sure you get cheddar. Like you can do like a cheddar jack if you really wanted to, but I would opt for straight cheddar, fried egg, <laughs> over easy, so it gets all drippy and everywhere. Uh, with the bacon. See, what about me, jalapenos? Like, what about yes. jalapenos on that? Yes. Can I, yeah, can I, you could do okay. that. Well, all right, I'm just I checking. I'm checking. It. I'm checking the criteria. I want to find out where my bumpers are as far as this <laughs> this uh, this test is concerned. I want to make sure I'm within the testing parameters. I personally this. don't that, like that cheddar with when I have an egg on it. I typically don't like cheddar. I like a little more mild of a cheese, but yeah, each their own. <laughs> okay, I could see that. Oh my god! Speaking of dude, okay, so like so. Something that was absolutely amazing. Um, so, like, when I was playing, I was playing Mario. I've been playing a bunch of Mario recently, and I got to the food area. Some of that food looked really good, like the big stew. I got to oh like that god. big stew pot, like where the birds so all up on. Oh my god, it was so cool! Like, like I was like this, especially when I became the big steak thing, and I needed to salt myself. Like <laughs> that was a. When you just hilarious. flop around in this pile of salt, like hey, hey yeah, hey, yeah, hey. I'm like I'm like this like little worm meat thing, and I'm like, and I end up like just salting myself. The birds like, oh, that looks hella good. I'm gonna put it in my stew. <laughs> so like the thing that I was wondering about that, and you guys played through this area for sure because you guys are like 50 billion uh, moons at this point. Like once I like became the steak or whatever it was a roast, I don't know what I am, and and I was plopped into Me it. Not. Like, did you feel bad after ruining it? 
because like that's what you do you just oh. ruin like the birds making this like food right like so he's like making this like great stew he's like oh look at that big slice of meat i missed it and then like you and then you like drop it in and then he's like oh yeah i guess i just like ruined your your meal like sometimes there's parts in games where like you ruin someone's just like totally reasonable thing that they're doing. Well, Mario's kind <laughs> of an asshole because I mean, yeah, well, he, kind of, you're kind ruining of. this He's... guy's stew, and then also his idea that just because I'm going to rescue Peach from Bowser, she's coming with me. Okay, I mean, so there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a huge there's a huge problem with how I've been playing uh, Mario recently. So so everything I've been doing during Mario, I've been listening and watching Black Mirror at the same time. So I'm like getting like really oh into this shit. Like I'm like, oh, what's really happening here? This is a bunch of bullshit. Like, <laughs> so now like Mario's getting really good for me. <laughs> like I'm like I mean, so messed up. I'm getting like really deep into this. I'm like, what are the forks' real plan? Like they're putting their their dudes right like, right on the side of the wall. Just like they're just sitting there. They're not doing anything. Are they dead? I don't know. Like <laughs> so, I'm like. Or they're like they're putting their dead up on the wall, like so. I'm like getting way oh too deep God. into it at this point. I, I need I need us to like craft a an entire YouTube series about Black Mirror style Mario conspiracies. There is a bunch. There's a bunch of really cool ones too. Game theorists used to do them, and they were like really really good. I totally advise you guys to go look at them if you haven't looked at them. <laughs> They're really good. There's like like Mario is a communist, and they like and they put all these like things together. That all Mario is like a, a like a serial killer. Like and he, he puts all like everything together and he crafts it all together. One of and my it's... favorite ones is the one Idol's Thumbs did, and it was uh, Mario is actually Wario. And, oh yeah, um, that oh the that fact one was that good. Mario raises his flag at every kingdom, therefore conquering that kingdom, not liberating it, conquering it. He becomes so obsessed with money, and one of the big indicators that your kingdom's up uh, issue was you flip your flag upside down. What's the Mario flag upside down? A W. Oh shit! Oh fuck! What? So like, okay, <laughs> yeah. a kingdom. It's a, a kingdom. Far stretch. It's a real far stretch. No, yeah, a, ki yeah, yeah. a kingdom. When you fly your flag, if you fly it upside yeah. down, it shows that you're in distress. Right. Mario raises the flag over every kingdom he conquers. A right. big M. When you turn an M upside down, it becomes the W. Wario. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's maybe a... maybe he just wants Wario. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe Mario doesn't actually love Peach. He loves the idea of Peach, but he's really in love with Wario. So he's conquering and then flipping these flags upside down to signify his true love. But like Mario's like kind of a man whore. Like he dated everybody. Like every female in that, like he was shooting for even like daisy like he he's he kind of went for all of them like daisy was what super mario brothers on the game boy like that's when daisy came out yeah and that was mario for like mario was trying to save daisy same thing with uh that one like the who i like in my head i thought was new in uh like in the city area but then i remember that she was a part of another pauline she's the, pauline she's, yeah she was the donkey original kong. donkey kong Right, exactly. Yeah. So they had like Pauline. You had uh, the only ones I don't think were uh, like he was actually after was probably um, the uh, what is it? The snow chick. What's her name? <laughs> the one or what's her name? No, no, not snow, the ones in the star. Rosal Rosal oh, the star one. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that yeah, one, but Mario, that's Mario needs to just like settle down and like quit going after everyone because he's so schizophrenic. He just moves from one girl to the next. It's like, dude, you're how old now? It's probably oh my time God. to start thinking of settling down. He's already he's, retired. Okay. He's not a plumber anymore. So I mean, he's already retired. Did yeah, you see? He's, he's got to, so, you know. There's a, um there, on that same uh, game theorist thing he does uh he does a um a thing about was it Rosaline Rosaline Rosalina Ros anyway, Rosalina I think. Rosalina it does a, he does a, a thing saying that Rosalina is Mario and um and Peach's uh daughter right he does a whole thing with all the connections that that's a daughter and that Peach is dead Oh and my god! Whole connection and it's <laughs> fucking awesome. And he goes into all the games and how they work. And then there's a huge twist at the end of his whole theory, and it's awesome. You should absolutely watch it. I don't want to spoil the twist because huh. it is so good. It'll be your homework, guys. I'll circle back and and I'll tell you the spoiler 
on the next uh, on the next cast. But homework for everyone watching. Absolutely watch those. I'll link those in the Discord. Um, they're so good. But uh, so, uh, you were talking about Black Mirror. Um, I'm going to tell you if you like the Black Mirror stuff and like taking that to Mario, play near. I just finished that shit. Yeah. The way that that story goes is fucking nuts. Oh, yeah. It is so fucking cool. And the fact that they make you replay it, I think, really helps. It helps bring in some new perspectives. And then the final playthrough comes and it's like, oh, fuck, what is happening? And this is your fourth playthrough. Isn't it's, this like your fourth playthrough on this one? So I found out the fourth playthrough is really a joke. It's not really a playthrough, but three big playthroughs is how much it takes. It took me probably about 32 hours to beat the game all the way. Through oh, okay. To okay. get all four endings. Well, five. There, hours, um, that game looked crazy. I, I want to play it really bad. Like, I know it's going to be weird because like, I, that's the one thing I don't like about doing the cast in general because it's like, like I'm like, oh, hey, remember that game you guys were all talking about like a month ago? I'm playing it too, and now I want to talk about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm definitely like I'm definitely gonna do it. But like some of the things that was really interesting, I've watched I've watched you play, I've watched a couple of people play, um, I watched you play, I watched a couple of people play, and there was like a, a like a perspective shift. Yes, the and like a lot of that seems are so great. cool. And yeah. yeah, so how does the, like the story carry through so well in the next one? Like how how is it? Like why do you replay it, especially four I'm, times? I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. Does it like oh, switch perspective? Okay. No, you can say in general. Does it like switch perspectives? Does it give you more content? Like what's happening? Both. Like why are you playing it again? Um, I mean, I I don't want. It, it's something I really can't dive into too much. Okay. Um, too, okay. Too spoilery. You will get new viewpoints on what you experienced during the first playthrough and then everything comes together in the end in oh fuck it comes together in the end so when you do the playthrough again do you play as a new character I'm, that's what i'm trying to understand like because again i always go back whenever i talk about multiple playthroughs i always talk about breath of fire dragon quarter because that is the my my highest end of multi-playthrough games like that okay. is the the best game for multiple playthroughs that like especially in an rpg like that one you replay it again but you're the same character you keep your weapons and then you get new story content because you replayed it like it takes you as far as you went and then and then up to that point you get all the new story content that fills in the blanks of the things that you saw okay so i'm gonna say this right now mild mild spoil alert it shouldn't really be one especially at this point but just letting you know if you are strict don't want to know anything about this game just block out for a second <laughs> okay um so yes it's a different character and it adds a it's essentially your assistant from the first playthrough so he's okay, alongside sick. you for a lot of it okay so that's 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 but, perfect so that kind of thing makes a lot there of are, sense to me so you so you get like a new interaction maybe if they ever like now this is just me like speculating well, right there's and, some that's, cool, and that's fine there's some cool stuff that happens you'll this definitely isn't a spoiler in the first part where you realize you two separate for certain spots so it's oh, cool to see. see what's happening at that okay point. that's nice. exactly what i was thinking so that's what i wanted to know like is there it, it seems to me like there's like that would be something really cool especially if like there's all these different members of the cast and they're all like going off in different directions. And then you get all of that. Like, it's like a, a DLC portion. I think, um, uh, last of us, the DLC for that was during that time period that she was taking care of Joel. Right. Like when he was like incapacitated. No, the DLC for that was her and her childhood friend that died. Oh, okay. Okay. So that was that build up prior to meeting joel or yes. where, where was yeah that okay. was it was like a prequel. never mind okay i thought that for some reason i was under the impression that dlc was like when they were separated and he's like passed out now i'm awake you were dead for like six months <laughs> well because know, like... that was a perfect transition point because all else i didn't know what to expect because i got the game day one and all of a sudden i was like oh fuck i'm playing as her what just yeah happened? yeah that was awesome i love that like I love when I love when games like make shifts like that, especially perspective shifts that you didn't expect. But yeah, this game like it's uh, awesome. Metal Gear, well, <laughs> like Metal Gear. What like when there is in the plane or whatever, and he takes off his mask and he realizes you didn't have to play as Raiden and you're amped. 
<laughs> no, oh no, not Metal Gear Solid 3. No, I'm talking about 2, where literally all of the promotional material, every like little thing you saw in the game, every trailer you saw of Metal Gear Solid 2, even the demo that came with, uh, what is it, Zone of the Enders, um, had you playing as Snake. And so you get an awesome, like, two-hour segment of playing a snake, and then you have to play as Raiden for the it, for the rest of the game, the rest of, like, ten hours. Um, and nobody oh. knew anything until the game hit. And everyone's like, what the fuck is this? And Kojima's like, aha! I got you guys! Well, like, in, uh... uh but, like... Right, like Raiden showed up in a lot of the series. Like he was in all of them after that, right? Like he was in because he's just like at the at the last one, he was like a robot ninja, like this fucking insane yeah. robot ninja that like like looked like a like a transgender ninja, probably. It didn't he, kicked, look. he kicked so much ass. I I really want to play Revengeance so I can get the feeling of being a robot ninja. I just haven't bought it on PC yet. <laughs> uh, but what I did play to give me a feeling of being a robot ninja is the free-to-play game Warframe. Uh, I've checked that out, um, and it's grindy. Uh, it's really grindy. Um, the the gameplay is kind of third-person-y, almost Destiny-like, over-the-shoulder shooter, but with a, an emphasis on melee combat and leveling up your weapons and stuff. It's interesting the story is completely incomprehensible the systems are extremely dense and incomprehensible uh the free-to-play mechanics aren't bad at all uh, i didn't feel pressured to really buy anything but it's a game about the grind uh i've been playing with some pickup groups seems like a nice community seems like people have been playing for a while um if you want a free-to-play uh you know mostly there are like versus modes but it the bulk of the game is going to be co-op um then it check out warframe it's it's fun it is it's just going to be a grindy looks, game of playing yeah it looks cool like the thing is is like warframe always look like a really really pretty game it just depends on what kind of grind it is and, the, and and like we always have we always have that conversation like are grinds good what's the point like i don't want to do the same thing over and over again but if it's like if it's like a mechanical grind like you're just like you're you're kind of like for hack and slash you're like jumping around you're fighting things that you have to deal with it doesn't feel as grindy as like an MMO where you're like, okay, well, how many do I have to yeah. kill? Kill 50 of X. And you're like, okay. And then you just like set your macros and you're sitting here sipping coffee and like talking to your friends. And, it's and, you, and that's what you're that. doing. If it's, it's more of that. like, a, I have to deal with this situation. I have to kill everybody. And like, even if, like, that's great. That's something I could it's, totally do. And it's, it's so destiny felt bad to me because I was literally, you know, hold right click to, to aim down the site point your, your cursor on somebody and hold the trigger until they die, repeat. Uh, sometimes you would move from cover to cover. Sometimes there would be a big guy that you'd have to go in melee a couple times. Um, but with Warframe, uh, I wish I would have played Titanfall 2 because I could have some like great movement mechanics to uh, compare this to. Uh, but <clears throat> the main way you move around is you will, you will jump, you will run, uh, sprint forward, jump, dive, uh, do a cool like slide thing and then jump up from that slide, do another dive. And it's like this weird mechanical flow uh, to cool. move from one place to another. It's, it's very fluid. It feels great to control the characters. Everything feels really tight and responsive. It is not the MMO thing of, you know, turn on auto walk and just watch the scene play out or turn on auto hits. When you were talking sliding and stuff, it made me think tribes automatically. Like the way you would just kind of it, jump, yeah. fall, no, slide, jump. Yeah, it doesn't have the skiing like tribes. Um, it's uh, it takes a a lot of skill to get really good at the movement, but it's mm. great because there's this there's this big gap, and I would either have to you know walk and do small jumps around all of these platforms uh, with a bunch of enemies in my way to complete a mission, but I just decided to uh, jump, dive, slide forward towards the end of this cliff, jump. And then dive forward off, completely skipping an entire segment of the level. And the game let me do that. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't built in as like a prescribed, hey, if you wanted to try to jump over here. It was just an organic option that the game didn't throw in your face. But it felt really good when I figured it out. Um, That's nice. I, I really like Warframe for what it is. It's free. I'm not paying for it. I haven't put any money into it. Uh, and I'm probably going to play it for the next, you know, couple weeks and put it away. Uh, but it's good. It's 
going to be a lot more fun with friends. It is not a great game to play solo. And it is way, way better if you have somebody experienced to lead you along and show you these I, are the systems. This is what yeah. you do. I, I had to watch an hour of YouTube videos to even figure out how the fuck do I level up. Well, I was so what I was, ask you, what I was wondering, yeah. So what I was wondering, I think it might be exactly what Eric's about to uh, say. I, I kind of get the feeling. So is it something that we could use as like a burner game, like something that like just to fill fill the void between like time? Like can you can you jump in with some friends, do a few missions, call it good, yeah. like hang it up, like, absolutely. Yeah, like just like today, you're like, hey, we're about to get into GTA and do some heists. Let's you know kill some people and take their meth. Like, <laughs> you can totally do that in Warframe minus the meth. If you wanted to feel like a space ninja and get some guns, pop in, burn a couple missions, shut the game down. Um, is perfectly built for the grab and go co-op uh, gameplay. Um, that's, that's awesome because okay, so like yeah. a lot of times, like like we have these games and and it is just really hard to jump in and jump out of. Like, like Rocket League, for instance, like, I really love the fact that we can just go into that, you know, play some matches. People, like, all day today, like, I've been, like, I jumped in with Eric, or I jumped in with Adam in the morning, and we played a bunch. And then, like, and then Eric jumped in, and then Eric, and then Adam jumped out, and then some random guy jumped in, then Eric jumped out, then Kick jumped in. And it was, like, this this cycle of, of games, and it was just so nice, you know, um especially lately. And, uh, well, I guess speaking of Rocket League, we have uh, our post game we can always an- we can always announce. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, we have uh, Rocket League King of the Hill one-on-ones. So um, everyone make sure you got Rocket League installed. I don't think I need to say that, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I also did a little, a little bit of that. I, uh, so I decided to play some ranked Rocket League because I hate myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the way to go. That's yeah. The- so, but, so I, I approached Josh and I said, Josh, I really hate myself. I hate my entire life. I hate myself as a person. I feel like over the past almost 30 years, I've been nothing but a, a waste of carbon and uh, an organic uh, you know, mechanism consuming resources. How can I really center all of my loathing into a gameplay experience? And Josh said, Tom, what you're really looking for is ranked ones in Rocket League. <laughs> so I started playing ranked ones. Uh, and I hate myself even more than I did before. I didn't even think it was possible to loathe existence as much as I do right now. Well, you, totally recommended 10 out of 10. So, you know, he lied to you. <laughs> there is worse. He just didn't want to throw you straight to the pit. Of That's hell. true. You, oh, you gotta, that, yeah, this is just the first le- level of hell. You know, there's, there's worse, but you know, that. We'll, we'll 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 breach the solo standard world at another date. <laughs> the solo standard world is the Rocket League Dota community. Oh yeah. God! Well, I'm, oh, I'm telling you for, for sure though. Like for sure, like everyone hates ones, but but really, like one v one is fantastic for mechanics. Like if you wanted to get really really good at mechanics and just re- it, ones is the only way to go. Like as you go, as you play ones and play through the ladder, you'll get better at it, but you'll also be more consistent. And that's what it's all about. Granted, the way that we do um, our postcast game that we're doing is a little bit different. So like traditional ones, you play out the full game. But for our postcast game, what we're doing is it's a one goal swap. So it's a lot like the lower pressure, a lot lower pressure. Everyone's just in there having a good time, laughing, just being bad at Rocket League. Thing is, is you can score... You can score on the best Rocket League player in existence if you just get a like a weird kickoff, <laughs> and, you know, yeah. it, and, and you score, and that <laughs> I, guy's dethroned. Yeah, so it just it just happens. So like, please uh, come check it out. It's gonna be a, a freaking awesome time. But also, uh, yeah. that said, before we move on, first. real quick, um, also I'm posting a link in the chat. It's there. I'll put it one more time. Next week's post has game. End of today's cast is the deadline vote tell us what you want to play if you have suggestions that aren't on there let us know so we can possibly put one of those on for next week yeah that is it now tom what did Um, you find out so i i did rank up uh i got to uh what is it bronze three i think so i'm still trash uh but now i have a rank of trash like i know that i'm trash even the game psionics themselves agree wow tom you're pretty trash which is great it's a wonderful feeling to know that uh, I just don't matter in the Rocket League community. 
um there's but, uh, uh yeah the, so like so so ones is great ones is fantastic at getting better the 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 next step of getting better like after you do ones and you've played like threes with your friends every once in a while the absolute next step the best next step is to go into a competitive environment like going in and playing in a tournament like there's no way no better way to get better than just playing a tournament it doesn't matter if it's like a large scale tournament or a small scale tournament you're just going to go in you're going to get dumpstered but it's going to be great it'll be so, fun. just so don't in, play in, with d-lines because he will quit out of the tournament in the first <laughs> two minutes of the game if you're getting steamrolled well maybe maybe we at 72 bank connector can help with that because we are we, we are hosting a 2v2 hundred dollar prize pool tournament uh and that will be i think we're doing that next month so february we're gonna be posting, 11th, i believe february 11th we'll be posting we'll be posting the details and the sign up information in the discord if you guys want to be a part of it which I encourage you to, doesn't matter how good, bad, whatever you are, however you think you are, you should absolutely get in. You're getting first dibs by being in the Discord. You're getting your first, you know, you're, you're going to be able to sign up first. It's going to be so fun. Uh, so please, please attend. Yes. It's going to be a great. I, and I, will be, I will be in the tournament, so you've automatically got one win under your belt right there. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, we're going to give out two $50 Steam gift cards because... Thanks to the overlords at Valve Software, we can now send these online. We don't have to go to GameStop to buy gift cards for Steam, which always felt like a slap in the face when I just went into a GameStop and said, yeah, I don't want any of your weird shit. I just want to buy video <laughs> games the way I want. Thank you. We, oh, went, yeah. we went into a GameStop today and we bought... Um, and, and we bought for for my brother. We bought him like one of those Rocket League. You know how they have the blind bags? There's like Rocket League blind bag yeah. ba balls. And now they have like a whole spread of like mm. of like a whole bunch of different cards. Those are dope. <laughs> I wish other games would have that. Just yeah. like novel, like like for instance, like like I would love to have a uh, like a Hearthstone deck of like Hearthstone cards. I think that would be super cool. Or maybe like a Gwent deck. Like oh, a Gwent wait, deck you don't, you don't have cool. a Hearthstone deck? Look, look, I've got my deck right here. <laughs> no. so, so the thing i wish okay, they look did at this. Uh, i've got i've got all these cards in here valve um made uh dota vinyls like for those of you watching on the stream i have this little friendly dude right here um i wish they were to do uh blinds with those they're about 15 20 bucks but they are really fucking awesome and i wish they would make more of them they're pretty cool like, hey i'm gonna buy a box that has one of 10 guys in it okay let's do it yeah, I mean, it makes sense for like a. Uh, it makes sense for like a card game. It makes sense like because like, you do Pokemon, right? Like the yeah. Pokemon trading card game is really cool. Like I think like any of the card games would be really cool to have an actual physical copy of. Like a lot of uh, like a lot of stuff. Um, like a lot of places you can go to have board games and stuff that you can play. It'd be really neat to have like a physical card game. You know what I mean? Oh, you're saying yeah, that would play? Yeah. Yeah, that would be so much fun, and I, I wish I wish that uh, CD Projekt Red would do that with Gwent cards. But I don't know how you would give out cards with the fucking like moving pictures inside of them. Like they'd have to be electronic because just oh. having like the foils wouldn't really make sense. Like I want the actual small movies to play on my deck, and you know if you have a There's deck of electronic deck, oh, it's great. So. So you've got like base cards, like standard, right? And then you've got premium cards. The only difference, there's no mechanical difference. The only difference is that instead of like a picture of Geralt, like killing some drowners with his sword, you now get a sweet little movie of Geralt swinging his sword and decapitating a bunch of monsters. Oh, um, dope. Yeah, they show up like in your deck management. They show up on the board. Like it's all shiny and beautiful and pretty. And I've started playing competitive Gwent. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, so uh, I got to rank four. Uh, I'm still pretty obsessed with this game. It is fantastic. I don't, again, I don't feel like I need to buy anything, even though it's free to play. Um, I really, really am loving Gwent. The only thing keeping me from playing it more is the fact that they don't have a mobile app yet. They're moving towards it. I'm sure they will at some point in time, but it's not there yet. Um, What's really nice, though, is at the end of a competitive season, they'll say, oh, you got to rank four. Here's a big pile of stuff for you. I know you only played two matches before the season ended, but here's a big pile of stuff. Thanks for playing ranked. 
Um, and they do that like every season. They do it every time you rank up. Uh, if you rank down, I guess they just laugh or they they cry a little bit. Um, but it's it's awesome. I keep getting more cards and more free stuff from Gwent just for playing the game. Uh, That's I don't, so sick. Yeah, I don't feel like I need to buy anything from Hearthstone. I might, or, or I might, might like in yeah. Hearthstone. Well, like Hearthstone's kind of starting to become a needy girlfriend. Like I have, I have Hearthstone on my phone, and yeah. like, oh my god, and, it's so and it keeps it keeps hitting me with all of this information. Like I just, I want like a clean, free game. Like, yeah. like Gwent sounds great, right? Like it sounds fantastic. Uh, I might pick it up, but I, I don't want to play it on my pc because like i boot up my pc yeah. and i'm like i'm like look at all this cool stuff i can do i want to play a card game like that's like not in the it's cards so addictive. now it's if you so, uh, if you have a laptop though <laughs> those kind of games are nice because that's the kind of game that you can watch a show and kind of play oh, i shouldn't say that about heart or this yeah this series, dude, but. dude that's how i play gwent like i sit there on my laptop and i like throw on like west wing or seinfeld or something that i don't really have to pay attention to and and I sit down with and I play some Gwent, but it is excellent at doing that. So we sh we should get on a stream, and you should load up Gwent for the first time, and I will I will walk you through it. We can even get uh, I know other people in the Discord. Uh, Bird is a very prominent Gwent player. He's got like eleven hundred hours in this game in no a way. fucking card game, man. Eleven well, hundred hours. No, this game um, hasn't even been out a year yet, has it? Yeah, uh, I don't think so. No, it, it's uh, close to eleven hundred. But hours that's a um, lot that's a, that's insane but like but i still like i still would much rather have it mobile like i i don't yeah, know if i, I want to i don't know if i want to play it on pc like a laptop i get like i get it but like like i don't know i just can't bring myself to like to play a card game like i even have hearthstone and i actually got into hearthstone for a while where i was like you know i have some extra spent you know spending cash like i can play this game let's go you know and so i i did it and i, I you know I, I put a little money into the game and i played it a little bit and i just like it doesn't have a draw there's no like allure to me because like i just want to play it when i'm pooping and I have other yeah. games. <laughs> and I have other games to do that with. Like Mini Metro, you know? man. Mini Metro is perfect for that. I do yeah. like Mini Metro. Uh, hey, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp uh, has gotten really spammy recently too. But that's what I used to go to, and now I'm about to uninstall it. Thanks, Nintendo, for giving me one notification per day. Go fuck yourselves. I heard There's that a that was really, really big incentivized pay game after like the first few hours. Yeah, uh, I got like I got like eight hours in, and it's it was fun, but holy shit, you can't do anything without paying now. It have you guys bad. ever played? Have you guys ever played uh, Pumped BMX? No. I have not. I've it's called it's it. called uh, Pumped. It's just Pumped. It's on the it's on the app market. It's it's by Not a Game Studio. I think that's the studio that makes it. I don't know something like that or Not a Basement. I don't know. Maybe not. Either way, it's really good. You check it out. There's three iterations of it, and that was my go-to. It's like real simple mechanics. Like it's just a little joystick, and then it's a lean, you know. Okay. And, but see, I don't want to be moving solid. while I'm shitting, man. If I Dude, have to move my elbows, like, you I don't, don't have to do like, it. lean in your pot. Like you don't need to be like <laughs> like sling flinging. Dude, your we're body gonna have a mess it's here like because this. I'm just gonna like fall <laughs> off while I'm taking a shit. Like oh fuck. <laughs> it's like crap all over the side of the wall. Anyways, he got weird. really into it. <laughs> but no, no, you're just like this. It's not that bad. It's not like it's, again. It's not even like this. It's just like meh, 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 meh. you might get into it and get super like like that. Just but just like, get like a half tilt going it, on. It's just a it's just a it's just a physics game. You know, like it's just a physics based game. You know, like you just go in and you can do like your jumps. There's a little you know a little I pump, get... and then like there's a little bit of ragdoll, but like. Again, it's just like it's just like I, I just like a good physics game. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nothing nothing wrong with a good physics game. Yeah. Um speaking of, um Steelaz is uh kind of a you know, one of the guys I play a lot of games with. So I asked him, like, hey, there's this really, really uh cool game I just found on sale. I'm like, you want to pick I could pick it up. I told him, like, I'll pick it up. Let me know if you're interested. And next thing I know, he's like, oh, I just picked it up. And then he goes to redeem it. And he's like, oh, fuck, I already have this. So oh. <laughs> I accidentally talked him into buying a four pack of something he already owned. But um, Human Fall <laughs> Flat. Um, it caught, originally caught my eye on the queue. Because I, I like to go through the Steam queue. One out of every 10 games is actually something I've never seen. It's kind of interesting. 
Yeah. Um, Did I own that game? I feel like I own that game. It Keep looks going. like Gang <laughs> Beast. And its controls is kind of like Gang Beast. Like you have right trigger, right hand, left trigger, left hand. But it controls better. Um, and what this is, it's like this physics um what's it called? I don't know how to, like a stress ball shaped as a human kind of looking guy. And um, you have to solve these puzzles cooperatively. And part of the issue is it's physics based. So like when you got to climb, you have to put both your hands up, grab the ledge, pull yourself up and keep your momentum going forward to climb over the ledge. Hmm. Meanwhile, you have to like turn around, try to grab something that your buddy's trying to throw to you. On accident, he grabs your arm and pulls you off the fucking ledge. You both go tumbling into the water and die. So it's uh, got a lot of fun ragdoll. Like that's uh, there's, dope. There's I, this I think uh, I I thought I had it. I looked in my in my collection. I did not. It turns out I just watched a shitload of streamers play this game because <laughs> I saw that. Uh, and, and maybe you maybe you got pretty deep into it. But like there was a bunch of crazy things you can do in the game that like like you can get around puzzles like you can just like run with a pole and like hit the pole into like a wall and then like fling yourself over a wall that you're supposed to solve like a big <laughs> puzzle for yeah. like there's a bunch of crazy shit you can do yeah. like that. Uh Dobby and I thought we were kind of going the right way. We went the wrong way. Um we managed to climb up on top of this building, get across these pipes, get on top of this other building, get to this catwalk and bypass three quarters of the puzzles of the level. That yeah. said, I think we both <laughs> fell to our death, but Yeah. Oh man, now I'm remembering all okay, so there's crazy speedruns. So you should absolutely watch the speedruns of Human Fall Flat. Cause like people are like doing like these weird like motions that make you like move faster and you're like they're like falling through all the levels into like other checkpoints because like right like when you go to each level you fall through like a hole and you fall to the level below it or something like that yes yeah 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 Yeah, so like this guy was like doing these like crazy like motions and like and like jumping over like huge obstacles and like opening the gate and then finally falling through like this level and like he'd like skip three or four levels doing like really weird shit. Like you should absolutely watch it. It was really cool. Is this is this made by? I'm trying to look now. Okay, it's not made by the people who did Gang Beast. It just no. looks really, really similar. It made me wonder if those are free assets in the engine because those character models are the same. Yeah, they are. They, that's like uncanny how Grant, similar I don't, they look. I don't think you can sue based off the fact of how generic they are, but they are yeah. the same. It okay. could have been, um, I mean, it's a super generic, like they're both like super, super generic, like yeah. character models. So maybe the person doing it, this happens a lot. Like this sort of thing happens a lot. That I was explaining, like he could just be a programmer that knows nothing about 3d modeling. Like the people that do like both of those games were like yeah. small teams, right? Yes. Like if, if, you know, I, I could be wrong, but yeah, they're like both like super small teams. So like. It's just a really easy character model to build. It's a circle with, you know, a, a couple extruded appendages, right? And, and that, because of the way the character is, you don't have to do the elbows, really, which makes it even easier to program and animate. Well, they're, yeah. just, they're just sacks, right? They're just sacks of people. and with, that's, with a little bit of skeletal geometry, but yeah. Right, so. yeah. But th- that makes it a lot easier for you to, like, animate. It makes it a lot easier. Like, is because there's no real animation in either of these games. It's just like it's just physics, right? Like it's just like yeah, it's you all procedural. grabbing exactly, like you grabbing something, and then like you're just flailing around. And the more horrible it looks, the the more charming it is, right? Yes. Like that's the whole point. Yeah. Um, so yeah. they're probably just using the ragdoll engine on a random generic model, and then like because everything in that game, it's it's very simply created. It's just like extruded it's, walls it's a... for the most part. Yeah, a low poly aesthetic is what it looks like to me. Yes, but it is. Speaking of gang beasts, do you guys have that? Because I don't, and I was yes. thinking about picking it up. I don't is have it, it either. Picking up? It's fun. Um, it's not a play by yourself game. It is a hey, yeah. Let's get a group of us together and let's just play some gang beast. It is fun. It is hard to control. They've done a lot of iterations over it since it hit early access, and it's officially launched a couple months ago, I think um i mean yeah it's i totally though. play it i totally play it. it's one of those things that like i probably play like once or twice and then never play it again <laughs> you know like yeah. hey remember gang beast that game was fun like that's exactly <laughs> the same way i'd probably take on this one like so, like i have gang beast but i've like booted it up twice 
So there's, <laughs> like, there's a group of four of us on the Discord that tend to play a lot of cooperative games together and just stick around. Um, so Speedrunners is in this niche for us. Gang Beast is in this niche for us. Ultimate Chicken Horse is in this niche. It's just one of these games where let's not do our mainstays. Let's, let's go to a throwback. Let's throw play something else we've done. Um, right, right. Kind of yeah. like Risk of Rain was doing that with Adam and I and a couple others for a little bit. Yeah. The the reason I ask is uh, Video Game Donkey just put out a video uh, on Gang Beasts, and I, I was watching it on the bus last night on the way home, uh, and I was I was tired, I was pretty punchy, uh, and holy shit, I was losing my shit on the bus. It was so goddamn funny. Um, but I, I know that humor isn't for everyone, but I was just, you know, wondering. I might pick it up. I might... Uh, oh, I did watch that. I watched that. Yeah. You would have people. Oh my to god, play it was with. so good. You would have people to play with if you was to get that. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. I, I enjoy it a lot. It's a good, um, it's a good little quick hit. Um, yeah. Also, speaking of fun, uh, did you guys see the Nintendo Labo crap? I shouldn't say crap because I'm actually excited about this. This, is, <laughs> this <laughs> is okay. I watched this video. I watched this trailer. This is honestly the most Nintendo thing I have ever seen in my entire life. Um, it is, it is whimsical. It is fun. Uh, it encourages play and experimentation and screwing around with physical mechanics of the real world. Um, I am super excited for this. I know I'm not the target market. The target market is, uh, you know, like, uh, young teenagers or, or older kids, like adolescents, um, to take pieces of cardboard that are like, you know, cut out and build stuff with them build like a piano or like a little backpack so you can become a robot um or uh, they had like little remote controlled cars i guess uh, and everything's made yeah. out of like cardboard and uh paper and rubber bands and just like really cheap materials but you put the switch in it you attach joy cons to certain places and it becomes like little technological marvels that you build on your own. So one so of them I, is really cool. It's the fucking like they have the fishing one where you actually have a yes. crank on a cardboard reel and you're fishing in the yes. game. The robot it's one so cool. has four sets of strings to your feet and to your arms and it models off of how far you're pushing and stuff. Granted, that's not going to work for me because I'm probably too far or too big for it. But so I have a question for this and this is just a, like this is almost not nintendo what i'm about to suggest as is, is what's happening here like i'm wondering if they're thinking about maybe making the making it as a platform for people to start experimenting with the tech that is nintendo i don't yeah like, that's it not something like it. that's not something nintendo does like they're not like hey guess what we're open source like that's not a nintendo thing to ever <laughs> no, say no, no, no. but Honestly, it is what they Google do since the switch it is something they've done since the switch or not the switch the Wii though it's hey we're going to showcase all the cool shit you can do on this. Developers, please fucking come make stuff for this. Right. So yeah. what I'm wondering is if, if they're like, if when we finally get our hands on this game and it comes out, like I use game in gi gigantic quotes because it's more of a novelty, really, when you get down to it. Like what I'd be interested in seeing is if they take that and then like maybe people are generating peripherals based off of this. Maybe there's like they're opening the doors. Maybe that game is more of like a you know, uh, what's that RPG maker, right? Like RPG maker yeah. has this like thing where you can like make your own RPGs. Maybe it's has something like that. I'd really like to see like some level of creativity because they were like, especially when I saw Mario maker come out for the first time, I was thinking like, Oh, like they're really pushing towards creativity. They're trying to open up their, their products their you know, just to, to say, Hey, let's be creative with everything that we've been working on, everything that we've been building, like all these foundations that we've laid, like now let's see what you can do with it. Right. Um, I'd really like to see them push towards that horizon. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'd be so would, interesting. That would be I'm looking cool, forward to this, but the one thing I'm not looking forward to, that's going to come out with it though. Link's mm. crossbow trainer. It's happening. <laughs> they're they're going to remake yeah, that's, it. It's almost guaranteed. Yeah, that's... But uh, but that's um, what that is. I think, what, three months out? Something like that? Yeah, it, it literally launches in three months. Uh, April 20th, I believe, is the release date for the Labo kits. Uh, and, I mean, I, you can bet that this will turn out like the Amiibos, right? You're going to pay uh, between, you know, 
30 and 60 bucks depending on the cat i saw one maybe it was like 70 no, 80 no, bucks? it's 70 and 80 but you have to remember this isn't just okay. the cardboard there is actually a cart game with it with all the yes. mini games yes on. it is so it's not like so holy in, shit i'm paying 70 bucks for cardboard what the fuck yeah um yeah yeah so i, th- I think I, that's I could important. definitely see them turning this into a giant market of hey here's a kit for 20 bucks and here's a kit for 50 bucks and here's a kit for 100 bucks and here's three kits for 120 and doing the big thing that they've done with amiibos which is they literally print money they are stamping cardboard and putting out game carts and printing money uh and yeah. printing money is very very nintendo <laughs> <laughs> yeah i well, guess so really? I, I just really hope i really hope that they push like they say okay well here's the platform that we're working with uh here's like a way of like making the blueprints and then we'll just print them for you you know like and we'll we'll send we'll send the cardboard and all the cutouts like you know we're we're going to be doing all these cool things for you i'd like like there to be like a developer kit you know something like that that's more consumer oriented so but we'll one, see one of the things they showed was like um a box uh like kind of have you seen like visual programming languages where you've got like they're usually made for kids. You've got boxes and you tie uh, strings to them to make, you know, if this thing happens, make this other action happen. Um, they showed one of those on the Switch. There were a lot of little teasers in there that actually show the future of this platform. So if you're, you know, a kid interested in programming or at the very least scripting Labo, um, it looks like they're going to give you these tools. I don't know That's- how good they're going to be. But I'm super, super pumped about this. That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. Like, I'd love for like young people to start getting involved. Like, they're they they have like babies first programming language now. Like, they have like oh things God. like that, right? But like, I, so I'd love I for like to Twitch you. to do that. Yeah. So I've got to tell you guys. Um, over over Christmas, uh, we you know, uh, pieces of my family and I chipped in to get uh my nephew uh one of these programmable uh floor caterpillars uh and a bunch of expansion kits so it's uh like a plastic caterpillar like with segments that are literal just usb male and female connectors on each end and you would plug these uh like pieces into this caterpillar and they've all got symbols on the top like one's got an up arrow one's got an an slightly left angled arrow one's got a slightly right angled arrow Uh, one's got like an arrow that does a 180 and depending on the order in which you plug these things into the caterpillar it will carry out those instructions in sequence so what we did is we set up like a little obstacle course and we had my nephew try to program his way through uh moving oh, that's the caterpillar so through it. cool it that's is so cool rad. now he's still a little young for this and he didn't exactly know what was going on or what we had to do but he enjoys putting it together and hitting the button and you know that's how you start eventually it's gonna yeah. be like oh look at all these symbols look at the stuff i can make it do um right there's been a loop function so if you wanted to give it a series of instructions have it loop and then carry out a different set of instructions you can um yeah i i, I love cool the stuff. idea i love the idea of it being like uh just another way to get people involved in that in that process right in that in that process of like having an issue like having a a th- obstacle and trying to get through it and and using it more in like a programming sense that's so cool that's yeah, why like again like really rad that's so cool so yeah um for for the people uh they were saying it in chats i'm gonna make sure it gets on the audio podcast it's called the coda pillar uh and if you have uh two parents who are engineers with a child uh as these people in my family are i would totally recommend you buy this for your little niece or nephew to get them started coding their very own little caterpillar uh it's kind of <laughs> neat yeah it's so, yeah it's interesting i've actually seen some like r2d2s like that i've been interested in but my nephew's too young for it still um also last last week two weeks ago the first week of overwatch we kind of hinted at oh fuck, what they're doing is really good well everyone oh, yeah. else agreed literally everyone else 10 million yeah. people watched the first week of overwatch 10 oh, million that's, i was watching it that's huge i was watching it and i was loving it san francisco shock please please san francisco shock <laughs> do it what? <laughs> like do better that's like, that's like hometown you know, area like home region but at least we have another one we have a uh, valiant the I think, kicking ass oh my god it's... oh my god the streams they're so high quality the teams have their own uh team colored skins you've got you know hype and gameplay announcers sitting in the same booth giving like 
super awesome, super accurate coverage to these games. Uh, they're being broadcast like, you know, actual, uh, mm -hmm. you know, real life high powered sports. Um, you've got people cheering. They have, uh, you know, semi mic the crowd, not as good as they did at, uh, you know, the international. But when people cheer and start screaming, you can hear them, which is great. Um, the arenas that they've set up while small are still kind of cool. Uh, mm -hmm. I really like what Blizzard is doing here, and I hope it continues. And let's keep in mind, this is the first year of the Overwatch League. This is their first try at this thing, and they've gotten it this good so far. Next year is going to be even better, and I cannot wait. Absolutely cannot wait to see what this turns into five years down the road. They got what's real, super interesting they got about that. Yeah, what's super interesting about that, too, is there's only one location for this. Like, yeah. this is just happening in L.A. Like there's just a yeah. there's just a one venue and you can buy tickets and you can just show up on any day that this is happening. Why like, is it? I don't know when it's over. Well, how long is this thing? I don't even know. I don't know how many weeks it is. Yeah, I don't know. I know it's I know it's not a short league. It's not like a like a normal ESL or something like that. It's like it's extended. It's a, it's a season. And by season, right. it's like an actual professional sport. You're going to have a season a year kind of thing, I think. Didn't a guy get suspended even? Yeah. So once yep. again, this is, they're doing real sports influence. They brought in real sports owners. There was a guy who used uh, some non-appropriate language during a match and uh, Blizzard suspended them for four weeks and fined them $2,000. Oh, so shit. They're, that's they're fun. that's so cool. Like, I love that. I love the, the whole idea of accountability. I love the idea of like it's not just like kids playing it's still kids playing games these are kids they're playing games but my point is is it's more it's more than that now right it's it's closer yeah. to like more of like a sports situation you're saying like okay well you're a professional you're doing this professionally you're going to have professional rules and guidelines and things that you can and can't do you know like these, these it, players are representing not only their teams they're representing their league and they are representing Blizzard as an esports entity. And if they treat that with, you know, just a flippant attitude or by being unsportsmanlike or using, you know, offensive language like this guy did, uh, then, yeah, they're they're going to get kicked out. Right. They're going to Blizzard's going to come down and say, yeah, that doesn't really gel with the kind of league we're trying to make right now. You can you can go sit on the bench for four weeks. Thanks for playing. Uh, and it's it's great it's totally what needs to happen because we've we've seen a lot of stuff from riot where they flippantly ban people who may or may not deserve it sometimes they don't ban people who totally do uh valve is just like eh, i don't know maybe some people will get banned maybe not we don't really care come to the international uh so they've taken a very hands-off approach to yeah. this whole thing come to the international if your country tries to enforce drug testing we'll not have it there yeah. <laughs> You know what? Uh, what's kind of interesting um, is the the wage they get. I, I actually, I, for some reason, I was like anticipating them making like this crazy amount of money. Granted, there's there's one one guy in particular that makes a pretty good amount of money. But these are all these are all salary. Like these people make a salary. They don't make a you know they don't make it per event. They don't make like a you know this is a, a real actual salary they sign up for. I think the base is fifty fifty thousand. So it's not like that good. It's like twenty. 24 an hour 20 something like that right is that right 25 it's living it's, li it's a livable wage you can live off of this losing not winning and live off of this yeah yeah that's pretty cool one guy is making 150k apparently that's like the highest paid guy apparently and <laughs> 150k what a difference between that that's like a 70 it's like a seventy dollar an hour versus like another dude that could be on the same team making like twenty. You're like, you're like, oh shit! Like, uh, I need to be much better. But so that, the way I mean, this that's... is going to work is eventually it's going to morph into more like real sports. They're going to get a union. They're going to get a players' union. And what's going to happen is eventually it's going to be argued that you're bringing in X amount of money. The players are deserved X amount of it. So yeah, I mean, that's that's just, when their salaries will start coming up because this is catching fire with the amount of people watching it. Um, it's like it's so crazy, like just how esports has evolved. Like it's like before the first ones were, were they like in like random shacks, and now like they're doing deals with Facebook and shit. Like, what's up with that? Well, people yeah. people were talking uh, in Valve's awesome 
totally free to watch on YouTube, by the way, a movie free to play where they go into kind of the history of Dota 2 as an esport. You know, people were saying, you know, the last Dota 2 tournament I went to, we were, or the last Dota tournament I went to, we were playing for, you know, a case of beer. Uh, and now there's a $1 million prize pool. And, you know, this was the first international. This is when people were like, holy shit, $1 million. And now we have a $26 million prize pool. Yeah, yeah, Jesus Christ. Well, the big thing is, fuck the prize pools. Like, with the Overwatch League, you had Twitch coming in saying, this is us. We want the premier rights. We want all the rights. Yeah. And now you have Facebook coming into ESL saying, we've got all the ESL rights. So they're taking, like, their Dota championship or their Dota tournaments, they're taking their CSGO tournaments, and they're going to be hosted strictly on Facebook. That's so what I, what, I I just that. Heard, what I just heard is that nobody is ever going to pay attention to ESL while they do this. Nobody is ever going to watch another tournament because it will be hosted well, on a platform that some people just don't want to be on. With Twitch, I don't have to sign in. I don't have to do anything. I can just click and watch. And unless that barrier to entry is that low for a Facebook feed, which I don't know if it is, yeah, I don't they, ever go, to, go on they, Facebook. Well, that was, that's be. what happened with um, with a Rocket League tournament. Was, I think it was Mocket, Mocket League or something like that. They, uh, they did... Um, they were on Twitch. It was really great. They were doing really good. And then they switched to like like some random one not like i know i'm gonna say like justin tv because i know that's twitch also but you, you know like something yeah. like that like it's like another random thing like out of nowhere mm -hmm. like you know th there's just like another i forgot what it was i i, I can't remember what it was so called. there's there's but, hitbox there's um microsoft's thing um yeah i don't there's I don't a there's a ton of them but it's just it's not gonna work like people people don't like People don't realize how big Twitch is. Like, it's just so easy to jump on. Like, I'm not so gonna. In, in second place is is YouTube with their game streaming stuff, right? And their viewership is shit. If you want the eyeballs, you go to Twitch. If ESL, I'm I, I'm sure I'm sure Facebook paid ESL a giant chunk of money for the exclusive rights to broadcast their tournaments. But all it means is that ESL doesn't exist in a couple years, or however long, or it doesn't exist for a couple years, or however long this deal is for. Well, ESL also has a YouTube I channel. It. I don't know if you know that, but ESL has a YouTube channel where they actually post all of their games, like a lot of their yeah. bigger games, they post them and you can go and watch them. Like for a while, you know, I'm at work and I'm like, I, I can't watch Twitch. What am I going to do? Right. Because I'm not going to be working. That's bullshit. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to start watching YouTube. And then I was watching all of these like uh, CSGO matches on YouTube and they have it on ESL. But had I not been in such a crisis situation where I had to, you know, figure out some way to watch video games instead of work. You know, <laughs> just kidding. By the way, <laughs> reason bosses are watching. I, I absolutely work. <laughs> no, then, then I wouldn't have even looked at the YouTube content. I wouldn't have even been there. Yeah, but I think I, you're I missing something with this, Tom. You're thinking, oh, they're on Facebook. I'm not going to watch. A, a lot of Facebook stuff you don't need signed in for. B, you're missing the point that by giving this to Facebook, Facebook is giving them a lot of money, which means they get to set oh, I up. Get that. They get to set up I, some major events with major funding. So there I totally, is. A, I totally get that. So, so they are going to get a shit ton of money and lose a shit ton of eyeballs, and I don't think that that's a good trade off. You, you I'm know not what sure might, they're going to lose a shit a, ton, though. I'm not. Here's a flip side. I, I this might be what you're talking about, Eric. I, I'm not sure, but you might get different eyeballs and i just kind of thought about this as far as like a devil's advocate like kind of thought like esports isn't a crazy popular thing in the world like it's a thing it's pretty popular it's very popular it's getting more popular well, my it, point is it's like is for a, the a way way more popular thing outside of america than inside of america right south korea right. and china have been doing esports for a good long while now you know the better part of almost two decades they've been you know hyped right. on starcraft i mean dota in china has been huge forever but my um, point and my point is is the average person like if you were to quote unquote create an average person that sure. average person probably doesn't watch twitch doesn't watch esports you know they're watching regular sports so like putting it on facebook or an environment like that might bring it more uh, I do know. I do know that my mom is going to really pay attention to ESL tournaments now that they're on Facebook. No. Yes, but that I'm also not saying that I'm, I'm not <laughs> definitely not saying that. My point is, my point is that like I think that uh, I think that maybe somebody is going to pay attention to it. Somebody is going to be like, I'm bored. I'm just clicking on this, trying to find you know 
I don't know, pictures. Fuck, My I thing is, I don't know what you do on Facebook. Yeah, I don't know Facebook anymore. Like, I'm trying to find the, the oldest, most stale memes I can. And <laughs> and now I'm bored because I've seen all of these before. If, and they watch and they click on ESL. Like, if you that don't might have be the exposure s- that you want. If you don't have to sign in, I don't see this at all hurting them at all. Because let's be honest, not a lot of people try to tune in to ESL anyway. So why not go to a big platform that's going to give you money and still have the platform to advertise you better than what you are currently because you don't have a platform? It, it might be it might be a ploy to say, hey, Twitch, you want us to come back? Give us more money than Facebook is giving us. I it. I don't know. I, we're we're gonna have to come back after this deal is you know well well into uh, the timeline of the contract and see you know is this hurting them? Is this helping them? Does ESL exist anymore? Does anybody care? Uh, and I'm gonna guess that you know far fewer people will. Yeah, I think it's really. You, I think you're anyway. right. But but <sighs> yeah. Anyway, if we, if you're not watching uh, if you're not watching gaming tournaments on Facebook. What you're probably doing is cheating in PUBG matches, uh, and you probably should stop doing that if, if you live you're in, in China. China. Yeah. Um, I'll let if you, you live, take this If one you time. live anywhere else, that's fine. Um, so Tencent uh, has been helping uh, the Chinese government arrest people for building and distributing player unknowns, battlegrounds, cheat platforms. Uh, Wait, in they're like, software. They're the government's arresting them? Yes, they are getting yes. arrested. Yes. Like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Not that's banned. A, not not that's kicked funny. off the servers. <laughs> yes. Thrown yeah. in yeah, fucking like, jail. Yeah, going going to jail for making cheats for a video it's game. Like, what are you in for, Cookie Butt? I'm in for, <laughs> I'm in for manslaughter. What are you in for? <laughs> Cheating in PUBG. <laughs> like, God and, damn and it. Like, what is this? The entire, the entire prison yard, like, encircles the PUBG cheater and they beat him to death. Yeah, just like well, how how the fuck did you ruin a game for everyone? Hey, in all fairness, shit. it might be the other way around, considering how many people might be <laughs> in there just for cheating. Because like like false positives and all that shit. Like if you get, like, there's just like a, a just like a like prisoners being overrun with just like random PUBG cheaters. Like yeah, well, with the replay oh stuff god. now though, it's so, a lot more obvious. Oh Thanks. my god! With so the, um. The whole replay mechanic and stuff they've been in. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, Tencent has, uh, this is PC Gamer reporting that they have helped Chinese police arrest 120 PUBG cheat makers. Uh, so, yeah, if you're going to make cheats, um, leave leave the country, uh, go go somewhere else, you know? Yeah. I guess. It's um, it's still yeah. a shock. I, I'm still dumbfounded by it. But yeah, it's 90 raids, uh, 120 people. I, Fuck it. Raids, raids. Like, like, do they do they gather like on Discord or like on Teamspeak when they go on these raids? I like the idea of them being on Discord. Like, they have like there's yeah. a special Discord channel that where they all or like the kind of police. Yeah, and, and they all like. like Hey, I'm gonna like they'll do what we did in GTA today, right? They'll be like, "Hey, I'm gonna go up the right side of this hill. Uh, can you get the left and and cover me on this?" Yeah, okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, okay, we've got two in the bushes. Hey, there's there's one in the tractor, so don't don't climb over and then get shotgun to death. Hey, hey, uh, shut up! <laughs> oh, no. And all of a sudden, the, one of the cops on the side, dude, I'm getting to bad latency. Let's switch servers. We got to switch servers. Yeah. Too much latency. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I pi- I picture them all in Turtle Beach headphones too. Like I don't know why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like just like full like like even like razor green Turtle Beach headphones. Like you know those ones. <laughs> like the corrugated mic. Nine mil oh, and they're like perfect. pistol drawn walking up with fucking Turtle they've, Beaches they've on their head. They got razor pistols, which are just like neon green with LEDs everywhere. I love it. I love It'd be it. So great. That'd be absurd. Um, also, so, yeah. the, uh, do you guys see what Eurogamer was putting out? I'm kind well, of pumped that? about this. So it's been rumored for a while. Uh, some guy made a tweet that was associated with Microsoft saying that if he was to be a gambling man, betting man, something like that, that he knows where Fable 4 is being made. And Fable 4 is not an announced game. Uh, Eurogamer did some more um, digging, and at this point, they are willing to kind of put their name behind. They believe Fable 4 is in the works. So I'm pretty pumped. Eurogamer is the same company that broke everything about the Switch. 
everything. So, so when they put their name on something, I'm willing to give it some credit. So I never played Fable. Really? I'll just toss that right out there. So, like, I mean, I I heard good things, especially for the time period of what was happening. I know that they broke ground on a few things, as, as far as I un- understand. They did. They did. They they actually broke the record for the most lies in a marketing pitch uttered by a senior executive of a gaming company. Sweet. Uh, yeah. That said, okay, cool. That said, it was still really good. But they it promised some- shit. Tom hates everything that's fun. I, but besides well, that, <laughs> Tom it was hates fun. Hate Fable. Here's why I hate Fable because they promised, hey, you slash and you miss an enemy and you hit a tree. Well, when your character ages in game, like in 10 years, that tree will have a scar on it. And they, Molyneux you fucking promised the goddamn world as a marketing tactic. And I bought into it. I bought Fable. It was a shit game. It was just a stupid linear hack and slash excuse for an, an action RPG. It had no good story. The stuff he promised wasn't in there. I didn't redefine RPGs. It was just a bog standard game. It wasn't bad. It was just so blindingly mediocre compared to all of the promises around the game. I never bought anything by Bullfrog or anything related to Molyneux ever again. Lion Congratulations, Molyneux. I don't buy anything related to you or your company. Jesus, so, um, well, B- Bivens, Bivens has a fantastic line here. Fable is Tom's man. <laughs> Tom's so, no, no, guy. So, uh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's it's fucking awesome. What, what I was I going to say hate Fable. is what people always lose sight on, and this this drives me nuts. Is yes, they overpromise. They promised something more on the scale of Morrowind, which came out roughly the same time. What they got wasn't that. It wasn't as open. It was still a fun RPG. But people then start judging the game and hold the game through a lens of this isn't what I thought rather than this is what the game is. Let's actually look at it for what it is, not what we want it to be. People always get caught in the prism of it's supposed to be X, Y, Z when it's really ABC and ABC is still pretty fucking good, but you're pissed and you say it sucks because it's not X, Y, Z. It it broke me. I I can't. I played Fable. I expected exactly what I was promised, and apparently that was a mistake. That was an utter mistake. And you know, Bivens saying that it was my No Man's Sky. It, it's the most accurate thing. I bought into the hype. I bought all the magazines around it. When I saw Fable on the cover of something, I did that. I read interviews with this guy talking about Fable. I you know listening to like uh, all the pitches and marketing and i was so hyped and it just ended up being a bog standard action game with a little bit of role playing thrown in i kicked the chicken once and i was known as chicken kicker for the rest of the game and that's that's okay but you you don't i don't know the game was just lazily built it was overhyped it was overmarketed it was lazily built and it wasn't a bad game it was just not great I guess so, but like I think I think Eric, you have a little bit of easier time handling like that disappointment than Tom does. <laughs> I'll throw that out there because of like <laughs> because of like I mean a lot of the stuff with uh, you know EA and other games that we've played in the past. You're always like, you know what? Let's just let's just see the good side of it. And then Tom's no. like, fuck you guys! Like you didn't give me yeah. everything I wanted. So. I'm not saying let's see, see the good side. That. I'm saying let's take the game for what it is and not hold it up against anything else outside the game. Look at it was the mediocre. Game. Like even taken at face value, if you don't know anything about the game, it was a mediocre action hack and slash with a little bit of RPG elements thrown on top. Fable Two, little better, but they they just keep playing out the same stupid shit of hey, we're going to release a mediocre action game, but because the first one was so overhyped, uh, we're going to just let it ride the coattails of you know everyone who's in love with this magical thing that actually isn't that great. There was some decent RPG in that. The skill building and the weapon <sighs> creation and stuff and the armor. And it was really it, fun to actually have, like there was puzzles in the game where you had to make your player fat, go to this thing, or this wall wanted you to kill your wife in front of it to let you win. There were all sorts of these little puzzles buried through the game that were really good. That mm-hmm. a lot of games don't go that deep and make you do that kind of stuff. Some do, but a lot don't. Did any- um, was was Fable three any good? I mean, we've talked about one, two. Now they're on four, so we're like skipping a huge gap. Did anybody play three? No, I was Eric? I was buried on the computer at that point. 
Okay, so like four might be really good. Three might be really good, and we don't even know. So four might be something being like being worth hyped about. I didn't play any I, of them, so like I don't even care. I played a so lot of them. Sure. We're, just gonna, we're just gonna have to see, you know. I, I'm pretty sure that Molyneux has been banned from giving any sort of media coverage or quotes to press ever again because of what he did with Fable 1. People were livid when that game came out. Yeah. And I, I still haven't gotten over it, apparently. The one thing I will say is the very end of the game, you had the amount of sway that taking the mask or not taking the mask has on the game is fucking stupid. But that said... Um, Talk about a developer that doesn't overpromise and underdeliver. Uh, Stardew Valley. Um, Praise the Stardew. Uh, Who's he, the developer for that? Oh God, I can't remember one his guy. name. It's one guy. One fucking guy. Um, sad monk, not sad monk. God, I blanked. But either way, he. Tweeted, I will. I will get his name. You keep he talking. He tweeted out Chucklefish. Chucklefish. Well, that's publisher. You. Well, Chucklefish is the publisher. It's. I think it's sad monk. It's you, Eric. Eric. <laughs> Eric yeah. Brown. But and um, stickhead games. Anyway, he sorry. Tw- he tweeted out a picture of multiplayer with like two houses and like these new items that you can't even get in game yet. So not only is multiplayer coming, but there's all these new items that are coming into the game that you can't. Like you can get stone house and stuff now. And for someone oh, cool. who likes someone who likes that game, I'm really excited about it. The the whole story around Stardew Valley makes me so damn happy because it's one guy poured his heart and soul into making Stardew Valley the like the best PC version of Harvest Moon he could come up with in his head. Uh, he he loved his fans. He said, "Oh, but I want to I want to marry this person." So he had you know a big poll and a vote, and he made that person a marriage candidate after everyone really wanted to marry that person in game. Um, he takes criticism well. He builds in fixes. He's launched the game on multiple platforms. He's now you know fulfilling his promises of multiplayer, and all of this is free. He didn't say, "Hey, here's multiplayer, but you got to give me like ten bucks for it." He, he said, hey, you bought the game. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for believing in Stardew Valley. Here's a bunch of extra shit because I love you. Stardew Valley is by far one of, the fa- one of my favorite things that I've bought on any platform. I have it on the Switch. I have it on the PC. I don't play it nearly as often as I should. Uh, but I just love the developer and I love what they're doing with the game. He's, he's great. Yeah, and the one thing I will say about him giving away the free content, it's also because you know, he's made hand over fist on this game. Yeah, yeah, he did. But he ran he ran the development well, right? It's not like he said, oh yeah, it's early access and unless I get, you know, 20 bazillion dollars, I'm not going to do shit with this game. Like, he he has been operating the this way since day one uh, and just putting his heart and soul into this game. Um, and yeah. I wonder, how, he, I wonder how viable that is, like, in general. Like, it, it is like it's the... Not. It's just it, not. It's, it's like such, it's such like a, like a, a fairy, you know, horseshoes and rainbows concept to just be like that developer. Like, hey, man, anytime you want, like, I'm gonna get you with those good game updates. You know, but like, you're like, but I'm eating Top Ramen. Like, but I'm, <laughs> you know, like, I live yeah. in the basement of my mom's mom's basement you know like you know like but i'm still putting out free updates like i don't know yeah and um numbers i just saw he grossed something like 25 million or the company did yeah so, I mean, and he he deserves every penny yes and every penny yeah, well that's cool and i think that's really awesome that he that super 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 good game but with that i think that's about all we got for you guys um before we do the rundown, little quick housekeeping. Um, polls done, polls filled. Oh um, yeah! Don't don't be so disappointed. Don't sound so disappointed about this, Eric. It's overwhelming. It's actually, in a way, it's a good thing because you know the league's happening. You know, it, it, yeah. we can we can make we can make the best. So uh, next week, postcast game will be Overwatch. Uh, we've tried this. Let, me, in let the- me translate. Let me let me get an Eric translation here. I'm looking it up. Next week. I guess the postcast game will be <laughs> Overwatch. Hooray. So uh, we've done this one before. <laughs> um, we've had some issues. We understand what we did wrong now. Um, if we have enough people where we get two different groups, we'll just run two different groups. We'll split up the 72 crew and we'll just go two different because we had 15 people voting for it. So hopefully we have some players. Um, this will be good. We'll give it again. 
That said, uh, we will have a new poll linked in the Discord within a couple days with some more suggestions. And tonight, Rocket League, 1v1s. Jump in the Discord. Let's have some fucking fun. Um, yeah, it should be good. With that, um, if you are currently watching us on Twitch, you can come watch any of the old podcasts or new content that we add to our YouTube channel on 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. And thanks to the new policy, we won't make a dime. Um, if you're over on... Uh, <laughs> thanks, YouTube. If you're over on YouTube right now, um, Saturday nights live, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, come over to our Twitch at twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Come hang out and chat. And as long as you're not being a douche posting a lot of old memes that none of us don't like, we're going to love you. You'll be part of the conversation and we won't ban you. It's a good time. Um, <laughs> also, also, if you have any topics you want us to talk about, any games you want us to play, any kind of suggestions, or just to tell us we're ugly motherfuckers, you can tweet at us at, at 72 pin connector. 72 pc podcast that one always gets me um and finally <laughs> rss feeds if you're barbarian go grab them at 72 pinconnector.com otherwise find us on itunes find us on google play find us wherever the fuck you like listening to podcasts but with that i think it's some rocket league time everyone so till next week yeah game on see you everyone bye, bye.